<clears throat> Hi viewers, this is Salahuddin with uh, lecture number 13. Uh, the previous lecture we talked about the main events of the reign of Judge 2 and uh, today's question or uh, today's topic is the Whig oligarchy. Uh, we will talk about the Whig oligarchy. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, from where and how it started, and what is the significance of the Whig oligarchy? Uh, this is really important question from examination point of view because uh, we can expect question regarding this topic. That um, what is the period? Why is the period of seventeen fourteen to seventeen sixty known as the age of Whig oligarchy? Or uh, they can they, they can also ask in this way as well that account for the supremacy of the Whig oligarchy during this period. Uh, basically, uh, a Whig oligarchy. It <clears throat> A uh, big uh, oligarchy means uh, the dominance, uh, dominancy of the big party. In this dominancy of the big party, star, uh, starts from uh, seventeen fourteen to seventeen uh, sixty. In this meantime, uh, two judge uh, ruled. Uh, one is judge, judge one whose rule star, uh, started from 1714 to 1727 and then the next judge uh, who is known as judge two whose uh, rule star started from 1727 to 1760. So why this period from 1714 to 1760 called the period of Whig oligarchy? Uh, this period is known as Whig oligarchy because uh, there were about 70 high families or you can say landlords of the Whig uh, in holding the administration of the country in their hands from 1714 to 1760. Uh, thus this period is known as Whig oligarchy. In this meantime, uh, they maintain the power in the House of Lord as well as in the House of Common, and uh, they they held all key posts both in the church as well as in the government, and even uh, when it comes to the policy of the uh, England, uh, both the foreign and the domestic policy uh, was in their hands. Thus, the entire realm of the government administration and policy uh, lie in the hand of the Whig. Therefore, the complete dominancy of the Whig uh, in, in all aspects uh, due to which uh, the period is labeled as Whig oligarchy. Uh, we will talk about the reasons why are the reasons for the supremacy of the Whig oligarchy. Uh, why the Whig uh, uh, maintained this kind of monopoly or a kind of uh, oligarchy in, in this mean period of 1714 to 1760. So we will talk in detail all those reasons or all those causes due to which they maintain this superiority in our aspects, in our aspect. So the first and prime reason is the credit of getting the British throne for the Hanaurian king, kings, kings. So this is the first reason. Because the Whig were in favor of the Hanaurian, while the Tories, they were against the Hanaurian, and many a time they supported the revolts like the revolt of 1715 and the revolt of 1745 that we talked in the previous lecture. Uh, while Wick on the other hand <clears throat> they were completely in favor of the um, Hanaurian succession. 
they supported judge one they supported judge two and they were deadly against the divine right king kingships they were uh, deadly against the uh, mm, despotism of the king so all these factors led to the uh, uh, kind of influence of the weak and got uh, the favor of the king the Hanoverian. so the first reason is getting uh, credit of getting the british throne for the Hanoverian uh, kings the credit goes to the Whig party second and important reason is uh, judge one and judge two had no knowledge of english uh, judge one and then judge two they could understand english they could not understand the politics the rights the tradition the rituals of the english society thus they left the entire uh, the entire uh, realms of the administration in the hands of, of his ministers and, and and as we talked in the previous lecture that was Walfall was the most influential person and he would chair the meetings in place of the king because uh, king would remain absent from the meetings because he couldn't understand English uh, thus, Judge 1 and Judge 2 had no knowledge of English. This is the second reason due to which the Whig oligarchy came into being. And the third reason is the use of the patronage power. Uh, the Whig, they were ruling in place of the king because the king couldn't understand the politics and he could not uh, convene the meetings or chair the meetings. Uh, thus, the Whig would uh, use the patronage power and, and uh, they would use this power for the, for the will and welfare of the party, the Whig party. And this very effectively, they used this uh, patronage power and appointed such people on, on, on key posts both in government and church where they can serve the party, rather the country. Thus, the Whig got uh, extremely um, uh, uh, absorbed in the English society, in even all the, uh, uh, even in every aspect of the society, and everywhere they got hold of the of the of the, of the society. Uh, fourth important. Uh, picture was uh, giving title, uh, giving of titles, stipends, and pensions and bribes. Whig uh, is they were ruling, uh, so they use uh, this uh, power and they use uh, the power of bribes, the power of pensions and uh, stipends and of titles for the sake of um, will and welfare of the Whig party. And even uh, Robert Walpole, who was the Prime Minister at that time, he would say every person had a price and and the person uh, and the price uh, and he could be, every person uh, had a price and he can be won by paying, their, paying out that price. So, stipends, bribes, titles, there, there, it was lavishly are distributed among the among those people who were supporting the Whig party uh, and the fifth important reason due to the Whig power increased was the giving up um, getting the power of making appointments on the post of the church uh, this power was already in the hands of the the Whig and they would uh, appoint such people on the posts of church uh, which can do better or which can do good for the party and such bishops and deans even uh, could point appointment as could uh, favor the Whig in their right cause and thus they they they, they the church and all those key posts were completely 
uh, owned by the Whig party. So getting the power of making appointments on the post of church was another reason for the Whig oligarchy. And the sixth important reason is the policy of toleration and moderation. And as we talked in detail that Whig, they were more tolerant and they were more moderate. They were industrialists. They were uh, landlords. Thus, they had very good uh, means of power. Uh, so the policy of toleration, moderation was another cause in the ascendancy of the Whig. Uh, uh, the Whig allowed Bowling, uh, Bowling Broke, the leader of the Tories party, to return to England. Earlier, he was living in exile, and when uh, while the Whig uh, once came in power, they uh, they gave they gave him permission to come to uh, England again. Uh, he, though he was very notorious and uh, among the Whigs. And he was also a leader of the the, the Tory party who instigated provoke, uh, and or provoked a uh, rebellion against the government and the king and the, against the, the Whig party. But still he was uh, allowed to come back to uh, England. This was a uh, first uh, act of their toleration. And the second Im, uh, important uh, act of their toleration moderation was the they did not reveal the acts uh, the acts like the test act in order to avoid the unnecessary rights of the people or the Tories. Uh, and what is test act? In test act that was uh, uh, enacted in 17, uh, 1663. And according to this act, a person would be measured, or a person would be measured for, for the position, uh, both in the church as well as in the government office, based on his profession, or based on his religion, or based on his, on his faith. So, in the test act, it was categorically mentioned that Catholic cannot, uh, 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 cannot be ascended to the key posts of both, uh, both in administration as well as in church. But they could not repeal this act, the Whig. Uh, this is another act of his toleration. And thirdly, uh, they passed the Indemnity Act every year. And what is Indemnity Act? Indemnity Act is uh, they would pass this act every year to facilitate the dissenters, to facilitate the non compromised or those who don't, do not believe in the English or the Anglican Church, or those who uh, have been pined um, for uh, violating the Anglican Church. So those violations, those pines would, uh, would be forgiven. Uh, in, in this indemnity act so these were the uh, their uh, highness in case of uh, uh, toleration and moderation and seventhly the Whig were rich and influential this is another reason of uh, their ascendancy are making the Whig into oligarchy Mm, they did not only maintain the supremacy in the House of Lord, but also in the House of Common, uh, because they were rich and they were influential and they were using the prerogative powers, they were using the patronage power, they were using bribery, title. So all these uh, effective means they were using for the Whig ascendancy or for the Whig uh, influence. Uh, expansion of the British Empire was another factor in the in the establishing oligarchy. And what kind of expansion? Uh, expansion of British Empire. So, uh, the success of the English in Seven Year War, Seven Years War against French, enabled the English acquire Canada, and so the uh, so their gains of uh, power and territory enabled the Whig to win the confidence uh, uh, confidence of people. Uh, they they had uh, this design to expand the British Empire to to every 
every nook and corner of the world. They were expand uh, in this meantime. They were expanding the British Empire to the Canada, and they were also expanding it in the and in subcontinent of their time in India, and and even they fought many wars with the with the French, and is it, uh, those wars are known as Carnatic Wars, and British. Uh, at that time, when those Carnatic Wars, which greatly influenced, uh, uh, which greatly uh, uh, increased the power of the English, so thus the expansion of the British British Empire that took place in the uh, time of Whig greatly increased the Whig ascendancy or establishing the Whig oligarchy. Uh, uh, another important reason was the progress in trade and commerce. This was another reason for the Whig oligarchy. And the Whig uh, uh, restarted the mercantile system and removed all limitation to trade with the colonies. So the commercial class become prosper, uh, become prosper and they began to have confidence in the Whig. Uh, so they removed all the limitations that were uh, imposed on the, uh, on the trade with the colonies. In this, the colonies uh, that the British Empire had in every corner of the world uh, could openly uh, trade with the English. So, thus uh, removing these limitations resulted in prosperity both in England as well as in the colonies. And this, the image of the uh, of the British become more soft and and tolerable for the people in the colonies. And they also got. Uh, uh, prosperous as a result of removing these limitation trade limitation <clears throat> uh, second important reason of the Whig oligarchy is the capable leadership or experienced leadership uh, the Whig uh, leaders like Stenop, uh, Sunderland, Walfall and Townshend were both capable and far-sighted uh, they did all for the prosperity and the expansion of the British Empire. The British Empire greatly expanded across the globe and the British Empire also got prosper in this time of Whig oligarchy because of those uh, great uh, statesmen, those great and far-sighted leadership. Uh, in the another important reason for the establishing oligarchy is the policy of non-interference. Uh, the Whig government did not interfere uh, with the internal affairs of the colonies and acted upon uh, on the policy of the laissez-faire or the policy of non-interference. Uh, 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 are the least interference in the personal life of the people. So the opposition of the people uh, in, in their policy was also least. In, in a sense, <clears throat> they were following the policy of let uh, the sleeping dogs lie. Mm, they could not interfere in the trade laws. They could not interfere in the personal lives of the people thus the image in the uh, in the people of the Whig party they had become more uh, more increase and the image become more soft and supported by the people because of the policy of the Lesazi uh, fair or the lake of interference or the least of interference in the personal lives of the government <clears throat> when loss of the respect uh, of the Tories. Uh, Tories were very notorious at that time and they got um, uh, they had badly uh, damaged their image in the country as well as in the in, in, in they were not in the good books of the the kings because they revolted against the Hanover in succession the first revolt that took place in uh, 1715 and then again they revolted under the leadership of Charles Edward in 1745. So thus these revolts in support of James or his pretenders uh, resulted in the loss of the image of the Tories 
again on the other side they had alternative in the form of uh, Whig party which become who, who got the opportunity and got the advantage of this uh, loss of respect of the Tories uh, and weave of the king so the king favor uh, all almost went to the side of the Whigs because the Whigs they were favoring the Hanover succession they were against those uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> policies of the Tories mm, so <coughs> the the Whig got uh, the uh, benefit of the loss of the respect of the, uh, the Tories and then <coughs> last and uh, but not the least uh, cause of the Whig oligarchy is the Whig followed the principles of the uh, of the principle of the glorious revolution. Uh, the the Whig uh, government allowed the people freedom of speech. They had the freedom of thought. They had the freedom of expression, and even the judiciary was made independent of the the government. Uh, poor and rich, low and high, they were all equal in, in, in front of the law. And thus, uh, uh, people got uh, more uh, encouraged in, in support uh, and, start, and started supporting the big party at every cost. So thus, freedom and, and security to their life means everything, everything to the people of England. So this is these were the reasons why the Whig oligarchy established. We talked about Whig, uh, Whig oligarchy, and then the reason how the Whig oligarchy established. So thank you so much for watching the video.